Hi, and welcome to Real Talk. I'm Ron Strand. I'm your host, and we're glad that you're joining us for part two with Victor Marks tonight. If you were with us last week, we talked about Victor's testimony and uh, his upbringing, the abuse that he suffered. And um, if you haven't had a chance to watch that, go back and watch it. You could find it on our YouTube page, our YouTube channel, or our Facebook page. Both are at the Upper Room Presents. That's the Upper Room Presents. I believe also, Marisa, are we on Rumble? You can find us on Rumble as well at the Upper Room Presents. Be sure to watch part one uh, if, after you've watched this one because we're going to talk about the ministry that Victor's doing, not only in the States here, but throughout the world. And uh, we're going to welcome back Victor Marks. Victor? Hey, hey there you are. You, Ron. Hey, brother. Hey. Good to see you again. Good to Thanks. see you too. You know, Victor, uh, we talked last week about what you suffered as a child and, and the PTSD that uh, it caused. And uh, we didn't get a chance to get into treatments for that. And it's probably not the best time to do that because that's I know that's a whole nother show. Maybe we should do it another time. But um, where would you send folks um, a quick answer, I guess, would yeah, real that simple. Be suffering for that. Go to our website, victormarks.com, look under resources, and then we have two films, Triggered and Triggered 2, and there's a resource booklet they can download or we'll send them. And that is really an excellent place to start. We have a list of free resources, a film to watch, and then a workbook to work on PTSD and really identify those things which may be hindering you. Great. Excellent. So they can find that on Victor Marks, excuse me, Victor Marks dot <clears throat> com. Yes, uh, Victor, you know, you and I have known each other, I think, probably for about uh, maybe a little over a dozen years now. And we first had you come to the upper room uh, back when you were dealing mostly with incarcerated youth. And, and uh, I had no gray. You had no gray. And I had very little. <laughs> <laughs> so look at um, us the silver yeah. foxes now <laughs> exactly <laughs> no doubt about that but uh over the years your ministry has uh has broadened uh a great deal and i want to show the folks a video as to launch into tonight uh, so we're going to take a second and watch this video folks about victor's ministry we started the ministry of atp really to reach troubled youth who had suffered or been abused. And we wanted to offer them the hope and healing that we believe God offers for those who've experienced trauma. The early days in the ministry, we really focused on reaching one of the biggest demographics of hurting, troubled, abused youth. We found it in youth prisons. Just come forward. If in any one of those categories, you raise your hands in, but like the Lord. He was preparing us to enter one of the worst areas in the world. The ATP Ministries is doing some wonderful things out here, working with other NGOs like Free Burma Rangers, Samaritan's Purse, and helping thousands of people who otherwise would have no water, no food, no shelter. And what you guys are doing out here is the best example of Christian leadership I've seen in this whole dog long world. Well done. Thank you. So former Marine and martial arts expert Victor Marks recently led what he called a high-risk mission uh, to northern Iraq. When ISIS invaded Iraq and started killing, beheading, and taking young women, even kids, for sex trafficking, and we had an invitation to go by the Kurdistan regional government through a friend and put together a team to help a number of girls who had been held captive by ISIS, who all they wanted to do was die. Put a team together, flew there, and hit the ground running. And what that did for us was show us how great the need was and gave us a love for Arabs, Muslims, Yazidi, whoever it was in the region, especially for their children. wars and the evil things happen, the children are always the one that suffer the most. People say, well, you risk y'all's lives going over there. Yeah, we do. 
But if I'm in the center of God's will, is it my business how I go home or not? Wow, that is a powerful video, Victor, and it really tells the story about um, the beginning of your ministry. You show the, the clip there of, of being in front of the old office there, and uh, you had some dark hair then, <laughs> and probably more hair at that time, too. Uh, but uh, things have changed quite drastically. Yeah. Um, but tell, tell the folks, because we talked last week about your ministry a little bit, or about your testimony. But you became a Christian. You were in the Marine Corps when that happened. Um, you met uh, Eileen. You got married. And at what point did you begin all things possible? And what was the main focus at that time? Yeah. Well, you know, after I got out of the Marine Corps, our uh, kind of our chart and path, I, I did try to, I, I felt called to ministry after I got born again. Um, but And I tried. I tried in the church setting, and it wasn't a good fit. Uh, you know, there's some funny oh, wait, stories. I, mean, I got I got right, This is this is a good point to put in a little levity, okay? Because I want you to tell the folks about your counseling. Well, <laughs> your counseling. I, I think it was. Session. I think it was both telling and prophetic, because of a a fella who you know had cheated on his wife multiple times and was coming to me for counseling at the church. I wasn't even married uh, at the time. I was just a junior high pastor, but it, his daughter was in my group. And, uh, you know, the, the last time he came in, he didn't want to see me. He had done it again. There was problems. But where things changed dramatically is he hit his toddler daughter and bounced her off of a wall. So when he came in, uh, it was a different mindset for me. Got him in my office. Long story short, you know, he was started, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me. My mom's so messed up. And it was so disingenuous. And uh, and he said these words. He goes, maybe I should just get beat up. And I said, well, um, yeah, we. I have to get the land on the hands that way because <laughs> of my background. So right. I went after him. And while he's on the ground screaming like cowards do, you know, uh, the pastor, associate pastor walked in, kind of broke up my counseling session. And uh, uh, I, I was soon after that asked to extend my giftedness in other ways other than being on staff at a, at a church. So counseling, counseling was not your forte or, or, you know, maybe was that just a form of intense counseling? Yeah, still isn't. I, you know, yeah. I'm I'm pretty darn direct with people, <laughs> and it's you know, uh, especially these days, people want, uh, you know, I, I give grace to the humble. Yeah. And 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 I man, I, I I'm very direct with those who are proud and egotistical, and yeah. you know, are caught in a cycle because they choose to. But right. Uh, with, with that said, it was prophetic because I've always had an inclination to protect children, and yeah. and that's what we do. Um, in, in large scale right. now. And so before you started uh, All Things Possible, you worked for a time for James Dobson. Uh, I did. Uh, focused, yep. didn't you? Yep. Uh, yeah. I was assistant to Dr. Dobson, who was at the time a boss, later became a mentor, and now in his latter years, and as I'm getting older, he's a friend. And Good. I count him as a friend, and he, uh, I appreciate him. He's one man that's never wavered, in my opinion. Yeah. He has stayed the course while others have wavered and compromised. So, yeah. but it was then that someone asked me to speak at a youth prison and my first outreach, I did my martial arts demonstration, actually hit a guy on the chin with nunchucks, he was bleeding. I mean, this is my life, folks. Trust right. me, if God can use me in any capacity, he can certainly use you. Uh, I, I'm the epitome of I did nothing about perfection, but I do go the right direction, at least following the Lord. And from there, it just grew and grew to where you said the expansion. Yeah. And somebody at one point told me, Ron, God is going to move your tent pegs out to expand your tent. I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. And man, it has come true. 
in, in a big way. Isn't that amazing how that happens? Mm -hmm. So you, you know, as I said, you know, years ago, uh, when I first met you, you were dealing mostly with incarcerated youth, going to youth uh, detention facilities, yeah. youth prisons, if you will, yep. and uh, a lot they of experience were. with that. And amazing, amazing uh, impact that you had on these young people. Uh, and then what point did, uh, did this become more about rescuing people? Uh, abuse people or, uh, you know, doing the, the high-risk missions, if you will. Yeah, it was when ISIS invaded Iraq, yeah. and uh, first Sinjar, then Mosul, and uh, it was nothing we were looking for, I can tell you right now. Um, it was only what we were guided and directed by God to do. We went there originally, just, just like the video showed, and it was to help uh, some women who had been held captive, girls. Uh, by ISIS, and we we do specialize in trauma relief. Um, and when we were there, next thing we know, we got wrapped up in trying to recover and rescue girls from ISIS. And, you know, it's when you kind of look around and go, wait, somebody else should be doing this. We're, we're not equipped. We're not, you know. And the Lord said, no, it's you. Wow. And, and he compiled a team. He gave us funding. And when I say a team, the, the team that we work with now is unbelievable. Our COO is a retired lieutenant colonel from Delta, a tier one elite group of men and women. And he led a thousand missions against the worst terrorists in, in, in the world. And he never lost a man. That's Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Teagues. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, so God, he says he looks at his training and his time in the military, special operations is all preparatory for the work that we do now. So he heads up our counter sex trafficking, counter pedophile work. And uh, I mean, not long ago, we were in Iraq again, 15th time in. We wow. still have a house there. That's just, we have an outreach center in Syria, which is right now, all I can say is, uh, you know, it's been under attack by ISIS. ISIS is still active in setting up checkpoints in Syria. They're still active in Mosul. It, it, it's never stopped. They just lost a caliphate. But the organization itself, it, you know, uh, yeah. they need to be hammered. Uh, so we're working in those environments still. And um, uh, we're prepping to go back time number 16 and do some very interesting things well go back to the first time you went over there and you realized that uh you needed that these there's people that needed to be rescued the the team that you initially took over there were you prepared for that at that time or no uh, no it was all preparatory yeah. uh, to understand what was going on then to speak to actual the victims who had been held captive and understand how large scale this was and yeah. realize there's no help right now. That That's what right. kind of stunned us. It was like, they're killing, beheading husbands, men. They're shooting kids in the head. They're taking women as sex slaves. And th the world is standby doing nothing. And it's thousands there uh, that they're affecting. So um, I, I think of, one point we were ministering to a girl and my wife was there and the short story is this girl trusted my wife and some other women that we had on our team who were brave enough to go and uh, the girl said you really do care about our other sisters who are still captive and speaking directly about yazidi girls and women and we're like of course she said when she w escaped she said, I ran out of the house because there was a bombing. There was engagement. She's running. Run. She grabs the ISIS Amir, the leader's cell phone, and she runs with it because she's just thinking, I'm going to need a phone to call. You know? Yeah. And she right. looks and she says, do you want that phone? I still have it. No and kidding. she pulls out an ISIS phone. So we took it and yeah. uh, 
And that was the entry point to where we said, oh, my gosh, we are in over our heads. And then that's when God started adding team members intelligence, former special operations, giving us direction, giving us funding. And um, and uh, all I can say, you know, is at the end of the day, God and an amazing team of people, a large network, did some amazing, amazing things. Yeah, you've assembled quite a team. Now, but at ISIS, these are bloodthirsty, evil individuals, evil. cowards individually, you know, yep. obviously. Um, but were you, these rescues, was it required to go behind these ISIS lines to yep. do these rescues? And Both and, both and. So still, we don't reveal some of yeah, our sure. approaches right. and tactics because there's ongoing work. Yep. But I can tell you, uh, brave men and women risk their lives uh, in all aspects of direct contact and negotiations to prayer. To And let me tell you this, prayer works. And I'm going to give yeah. you one of the worst situations that I felt helpless when one of our teammates is talking to a family whose daughter is being held captive. It, yeah. it doesn't get any more real. While he's talking to him, the brother's phone lights up. It's his sister who's held captive. And he starts talking to her. And he's like, oh, my gosh, where are you? She tells him. And he's like, how are you doing? She goes, it's bad. It's so bad. Please help us, please. And, he and yet said, she's captive, and, but she's on this phone. Yeah, she got a phone. <clears throat> so she's hiding, calling for help. And she, you know, he says, right now there's someone here that is going to help make you safe and rescue you because we're gathering and telling one now. It's one of my team members, just an amazing young man. And uh, he gets on the phone and starts talking to her. And then next thing you know, and all this is recorded, we have it recorded on an audio phone. Uh, you hear, because they're speaking in Aramaic uh, and other, you know, languages. Yeah. It said, uh, Victor Marx will rescue you. Wow. For me to hear that, because Ron and those of you watching, we knew where she's at. Rescue was not an option. It would require the U.S. military which we didn't have the backing of at the time. Yeah. Um, it would require the U.S. military special operations team going in. It, it, she was in the center, in the heart of ISIS-controlled territory in Mosul. For three days, I was so angry because I, I was like, I, we can't do it. I mean, we looked at every option. There's no way. This one's not. that. You, you, we can't do it. And I got mad at God. I'll just tell you, because I'm like, Did why you? would you bring this to us? I have to hear my name being spoken that I'm going to make sure this girl's rescued because of the reputation we had. You know what? You know what the Lord told me? He says, why don't you pray? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't need to pray. We need, we, we need, you know, a special unit <laughs> yeah. to line up and right. uh, for actionable intelligence where we have to take the target in order to get her while they're getting ISIS. Cause yeah. they were, again, I can't explain all the ways we did some things and still do, but guess what? I started praying. I said, all right. And I got people praying, Ron, just a few months later. Um, uh, well, uh, let me put it in the time frame to this. This is what's intense. The girl got free. No, she kidding. escaped one night running down the street. She escaped from this house, this hostage house. She's running, and a man grabs her not even half a block away, pulls her into his house, covers her mouth, throws her on the ground, and he says, shh. He goes, and his family's there. He goes, we know you're being held captive. Wow. You will stay with us until we're all free. Amazing. And he hid this girl until the liberation which thank god we we got to see and be part of some aspects and this girl was free prayer god's is provision. what did that yeah god's provision and put that man right there at that moment radical
Absolutely amazing. Victor, the last time we talked, <clears throat> we had you on shortly after uh, the uh, our dis dismal and uh, horrific, disgraceful, horrific withdrawal from Afghanistan, right. and you had teams over there. Yep. Can you give us an update on on what's you know, what you were able to achieve? Yes, and if there's any ongoing work that you're doing there. Uh, absolutely. Through again a coalition of save our allies and other uh, very strategically placed people, we were able to be part of getting out many, you know, uh, from personalized family to uh, really thousands getting out of the country. And to be part of a bigger team is both humbling but very satisfying. And yeah. right now, there are many still caught behind lines. There are many that we still are hiding, are protecting, are funding and feeding for security. And we're working, I can say, uh, now I can say, we're, we're working very closely with uh, part of the underground church in Afghanistan. And uh, there are some, Ron, that do not want to leave. As believers, really? yeah, as believers, they say God or God is keeping yeah. us here. Yeah. To be a light in the middle of all this darkness, Amazing. even if it means unto death. So yeah. for that, we're grateful. The other thing is we've been able to minister to those who made it all the way here to the U.S. And uh, we've been able to provide resources and resettlement funding, which people provided. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's it, the outcome has been better than expected. Uh, with the, like you said, the dismal decisions that uh, our administration made. And yeah. believe me, the, the Taliban is in full strength and control, doing yeah. horrific things over there. And uh, we just have to continue to pray for the right timing to do more. Yeah. Well, and that kind of brings me to uh, uh, talking about misinformation or disinformation that we get out of this administration. Uh, because the picture is not what the picture, what they were describing, obviously. Not at all. <clears throat> but you have a um, intelligence briefing. Is that what you call it? Uh, yeah, the daily intelligence daily, briefing. Daily intelligence briefing. Uh, and how, how can folks subscribe to that on your website? Is it they can just go to victormarks.com yeah. <clears throat> forward slash brief. And this is one of the, to us, this is one of the best ways to receive really solid, factual, checked and double checked by our analysts of things that matter. Because yeah. if you just sit in front of the TV, yeah. including conservative and yeah. other, you know, y y you'll get worn out. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it will start to oppress you. So we tell people limit what you watch on mainstream media and then get the best source of information as you can. Ours, we believe, is one of those. Um, and, I mean, our initial sign-up, we had, gosh, almost 100,000 people sign up for it. It is a powerful, Easy. strong, well-written, um, and we, we have guest contributors, uh, but it is a place that they can get factual information that matters for them, whether they're a businessman or a housewife, yeah. uh, a pastor, uh, you know, or a soldier. Go yeah. to victormarks.com forward slash brief and sign up to, tonight. Victormarks forward slash brief. Uh, and that's all. We'll put that up on the screen, too. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so folks can to subscribe to that. Because you've got uh, operatives that are on the ground. You've got intelligence people that have, that have worked in this area. You've got, as you said, contributors that, that are in the know that give the straight scoop uh, about what's right. going on. Uh, because, yeah, there and as you said, even on what we consider conservative um, news sources are are lacking at best um, and it's selective. Um, but uh, there's so much that's going on that we don't know. So, folks, I encourage you to um, to, to sign up for that briefing and you'll Thank get you. it in your your email daily. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that um, you guys have is the House of Refuge. Is that, yes. is that there's more than one house of refuge, is there not? Or is that a particular? Yeah, we have different safe houses in different parts of the world. 
yeah. uh, the House of Refuge, uh, or we call it Holly's House. That's based in Southeast Asia, Cambodia. We just enlarged and got a much bigger home. Uh, that's where we take in both by rescue, recovery, and also by appointment of uh, the police and the police, uh, girls who are trafficked or raped, and then also other NGOs who have high-risk cases that maybe they take a girl who's been trafficked or abused, but now they don't have the justice piece or the protection piece. So we'll take those girls into our house um, and provide everything they need, and it's beautiful, including the biggest thing is just real discipleship. We never force our faith. We, we deal with the psychological, the education aspects, the medical, uh, but they know they're protected and loved. And eventually what draws them is love. And yeah, yeah we're going to be there uh, pretty soon. Uh, we're going to the Middle East and then we're heading to Southeast Asia. We're prepping and, and training for it right now uh, because we just took on a case uh, that is from that area that I can share with the the viewers without compromise. An American family that lived there, their three-year-old daughter was raped by oh. a predator. Uh, they reported it. They went to the police, but it's a very complicated issue in that country. We have the right politicians, the right legal, and we have the right cowboy teams and people on the ground to hunt predators. And then, of course, we come in. But we just green-lighted to take that case. The Christian family, the American family, are Christians. They're back in the U.S. with their daughter, but the predator is still at large. And just yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, we green-lighted it, and we're going after that fella. So uh, from capture, from hunt to capture to prosecution, and, uh, yeah, Holly's house is part of that. That's amazing stuff. Victor, you know, uh, and folks, if you haven't had a chance to watch part one, please go back and watch yeah. part one oh, when yeah. we did Victor last week. Because, you know, you and I talk about what prayer does, Victor. And, and you know, if you've, been, if you've been walking with the Lord long enough, you've seen yeah. situations like that. I know one you were talking about when you were young and uh, your stepfather was coming in to abuse you and your mother prayed a prayer that he wouldn't be able to cross the door. And you're kind of like, well, <laughs> yeah, what's that going to do? But he didn't. And he ended up he passing get, out. He couldn't get in. Yeah, yeah. And so we see God working in those ways. And so the picture that you'll see, folks, is is somebody who went from a, a childhood of terrible abuse uh, and then gets a phone call from his estranged father who was a bad dude who becomes a Christian and reaches out to Victor, restores relationship. Victor becomes a believer. God calls him to the ministry. And today he's impacting with his ministry people around the world, uh, innocent people who are being uh, abused. And you know that scripture tells us when you've done this unto the least of these, you've done it unto me, Jesus mm -hmm. said. And that's what this is about. And folks, this ministry is a ministry of my heart. My wife and I have uh, supported Victor for many years. And um, thank you so much. And so, I, again, I, I, I encourage you, go to the website. I, I don't like hard appeals, but go to the website and pray when you do and say, God, how can I become a part of this? Am I called just to pray for this? Am I called to, to financially support this? Um, but this is a vital ministry because this is something that's making a difference in the kingdom of God. And it's changing people's lives and people in the Middle East, Muslim people who have never had any kind of contact with Christians and they see Victor and his team come in, ministering Christ to them. They're being Jesus to them. And lives are changed. There's a great outpouring of God's Spirit in the Middle East right now. Yes. And many, many hundreds of thousands of people are coming to Christ. And Victor, yeah, I'm sure you see that. Including in Iran. Including that, in Iran. Yes, I, indeed. I'll have more to report on that. But pray for us about Iran. All right, well, we got to do another show and we got to hear about that one. Yeah. Um, but you're right. And God visits these people in dreams and visions. It's quite remarkable. 
And so, folks, I, I just want to encourage you. You know, we have our own uh, nonprofit here, and it's great if you if you help support us. We love that. But this is a ministry that's that's making a difference in the world. It's making a difference in the kingdom of God. And so, I encourage you. I encourage you to pray prayerfully. Pray as you look at the website. As you look at if you watch these two uh, interviews that we've done, and see where God can use you in that. Because it's, it's the people behind Victor and his team that are holding this up. And God's providing the resources through people like you who are, who are supporting Victor. And tonight also, folks, if you're watching and you're thinking, well, I don't even know what all this Christian stuff is about. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice and opens that door... I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Basically, what Jesus is saying there is if you open your heart to me, I'll come into you, I'll have fellowship with you, and I'll change your life. And it's a, if you confess Jesus with your, with your lips and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so pray a prayer tonight, something like this, Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner I accept your free gift of grace through your son, Jesus Christ. I want to open that door, Lord, and allow you to come in and sup with me and change my life and give me eternal life. And I confess my sins to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, it's a simple prayer. And it's not about the magic of a prayer, but it's, it's called surrender. And when you surrender your life to Christ, he promises at his word, he'll come in and change you. And uh, looking at a man here who, by all uh, accounts and by statistically speaking, would either be in prison or dead today. But he's doing a mighty work for God, him and his wife and his family. And pray for them, please. Thank They're you. under attack constantly. And so, folks, uh, we appreciate you watching. I know this is a heavy subject, but uh, these are things that are going on that I just think it's important for the body of Christ to know. And so we're glad that you joined us. And if you have any questions, uh, you could reach out to Victor's team at uh, victormarks.com or reach out to us at info at the upper room presents.com. If you prayed that prayer tonight, we'd love to send you a Bible and encourage you in your new faith and reach out to us at prayer at the upper room presents.com that's prayer at the upper room presents.com victor thanks so much again for being with us it's always a joy um, and we'll have <clears throat> we'll have you back again because i want to hear more about what's going on in iran and what you might be doing there so you bet. Uh, we'd be excited Brother, about that hey thank you for your faithfulness because i know you're still getting over being sick and oh, you, you have just knuckled up to do this, brother. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. God bless you. Love you, Victor. Love Give you my too. best to Eileen and the family. Sure and folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on Real Talk. God bless you.